No-code solutions are going to become a bigger and bigger part of the future. But is the future already here? Can we already build a complete app without writing any code? Now, why am I so confident about no-code solutions becoming bigger and bigger? To answer that, let's rewind all the way back to the beginning of coding. It all started in the 1840s with the legend Ada Lovelace, who was deemed to be the first computer programmer. There was a computer proposed by a guy named Charles Babbage called the Analytical Engine. Fun fact, it actually never got released due to conflicts with the engineers and inadequate funding. But anyways, Ada ended up writing a detailed instruction on how to calculate something called the Bernoulli numbers with that engine. Now this is what the instructions look like and I don't know about you, but I have no idea what I'm looking at here. But this is what programming looked like at the very beginning. And I assume there was some machine code that was used at the beginning too, which is basically writing manual ones and zeros. Then about 80 years later, we start seeing some of the first modern computers, which were powered by assembly code. I actually took some courses at university where I had to write assembly code and let me tell you, doing even simple things like assigning a variable is a lot more complicated than what we are used to nowadays. You have to reassign things in registers, but like not any register because only some of the registers are meant for actually storing data. And you have to keep track of your pointer position and jump to certain areas in the code. Basically, it's just a complete mess compared to current technology. Then finally, in 1954, we have a general purpose high level language that is Fortran. Here's what some Fortran code looks like. Then around 1970s, we have languages like C being released. In the 80s, we have C++. The 90s bring us languages like Python and JavaScript. And nowadays, we have languages like Dart. Now, did you notice anything special about the trajectory of all the programming languages? They all require less and less code to execute the same thing. But let's not stop there. It's becoming more and more rare for developers to not use some sort of framework or minimal code solution when they are building products. There's platforms and frameworks like Flutter and React Native, but you also have some for the web. We have React, Next.js, and probably like a hundred other frameworks. For iOS devices, there is now Swift UI, which basically lets you build UI using as little code as possible. For Android devices, there's Jetpack Compose, which also makes it easier to build UIs using less and less code. But wait, there's more. Even within these frameworks, we have packages that make it even less code for you to write. For Flutter, there's packages like Flutter Slidable, which give you fully built sliding widgets, or Flutter Fire UI, which gives you a complete login UI and logic, or even packages like the Agora UI queue, which lets you add a whole video call into your app with only four lines of code. I hope by this point in the video, you see the point that I'm trying to drive home here. Programming has been moving towards less and less code since the very beginning. According to this trend, building apps and website without using much code at all will be the norm in the very near future. But there is one more thing that I left out from this timeline, and I'm sure some of you have been yelling at me about it, that there are already no code solutions out there that are being used right now. But that's the question we're here to answer today. Are these tools at a point where you can build and release an app without running any code at all? The tool we'll be using today is called Flutter Float, which in theory can build mobile apps, websites, and desktop apps all from one single tool. If you want to give this tool a try along with me, there's a nice affiliate code in the description. But now it's time to put no-code tools to the test and see if they are ready to take over already or if they need some more time to mature. Uh -oh. Time to go to the drawing board. Let's start by brainstorming some qualities that we want our app to have. First, we just want the app to be overall fire. We want it to be something that has been never seen before. We also want this app to just be a complete like game changer for our users. The goal is to help them become billionaires. Lastly, we want to make this app make us billionaires too. So we need to get to unicorn status as fast as we can. Now, in case you are unaware, the way Silicon Valley startups name their projects is you have to do a little bit of a play on words or you remove some vowels sometimes if that makes sense too. Using the word fire, we don't have many vowels to begin with. So instead, we're going to go with fire. Maybe because this app will go open flames. Now, since we want this app to be for billionaires, the next obvious name is Billy Do. Get it? It's like a mix of billionaire and to do. It's very original. Now, the last point is about unicorns. And what's the closest thing to a unicorn? That's right, donkeys. So we got the option Donkey Do. Now, all these are fantastic, but we need something that is going to be a complete game changer in this space, yet so simple. So we're going with the app name To Do App. There's our name. And look at this, they even provide a nice sample for a to-do app right within Flutterflow. How lucky are we? It's almost as if this video was planned. We have our project name. We do want to add Firebase to our project. Okay, we added that in. 
And of course, we need a logo for this unicorn application. Ah, you can't even see the black to-do app part. There we go, beautiful. Doesn't go along with the whole color scheme, but who cares? Now we can actually run this app test to make sure it works. So here it is, our beautiful app. Oof. And I'm just trying to figure out where all this data is coming from because it's not in my database. And this is the part of the video where I debug for a couple hours trying to figure out what's going on. Turns out I didn't actually connect Firebase correctly here. And then I went back, clicked a bunch of buttons, and to my surprise, things still didn't work. So I had to restart the project, didn't click a bunch of buttons this time, and connected Firebase, and everything worked right away. We can add a task, it's added to the database, it's added here, we can check it off, see our completed task over here. App, beautiful, ready to be released. So there's four Google Play tracks, internal, where you test within your team, alpha, where you have a closed loop of testers, beta where it's out for testing for the public and then production where you're actually releasing the app for full use. We are going to be doing the beta route. So you first need to create an app on the actual Play Store. Here we're going to be adding in our to-do app name, very beautiful. And then after the first time that you create it, the first time you upload it, you'll be able to use Flutterflow to actually deploy it directly from there. So that's why it's failed the first time. You can even check in here. It says we just haven't found that specific package, but we can download it manually drag it in here everything worked start the rollout now here in order to get it actually listed on the app store you have to go through add in a description add in some other stuff but the hardest part is you actually need some screenshots of the application and you need a nice banner so here we go taking some poor quality screenshots photoshopping them to somewhat fit a screen and then copy pasting them right into our release so red hot, bada bing, bada boom. We have an app on the App Store. But let's get back to the main question we were trying to answer with this video. Can you really write an app without any code? Now, even though this app isn't something that I would ever use, nor should any of you use it, it was built and released to the App Store without having written a single line of code. Now, Flutterflow is a relatively new tool, and I personally don't know many tools I can build for all these platforms, but there's a whole web space where there's so many mature tools that you can build a ton of very creative websites with. Now specifically for Flutterflow and whether to use it or not, at this point, I would say it probably depends on the app you want to build. If you're building a very complex app that you already know needs to handle a lot of state, complex networking, and a lot of other complicated things, it'll probably require you to do most of the work on your own. But even then, you can export the Flutter code from Flutterflow and use it as a template or a starting point for that project. And then if you are doing something that's simple enough, it's technically possible that you can release an app without having to write a single line of code. But here's the thing, no code tools are just going to keep getting better and better. In my opinion, rather than to ignore no code solutions, we should embrace them and use them to speed up our capability to launch and build products that we want to launch. Also, another last reminder, there's a link in the description if you want to try out Flutterflow. But like I said, you can't write more complicated apps without using any code. For example, I built this app called Streamer, and at least at the time of recording, building something like this without code would not be possible. And there should be a nice card on the screen that you can click and take a look at that project. 